everyone, welcome to Fantastic Microbes and where to find them. Today we're going to be talking about dehydration and looking at it under the microscope. Let's check it out. So what is dehydration? Well, it's essentially running out of water to the point where our cells can't function anymore. And I thought it'd be kind of cool to look at this under the microscope and I devised a simple experiment and we're going to do that right now. So you'll see here I have three different slides, and on these slides I'm going to put some drops of blood. Here we go. Now for the first slide I'm just going to put a cover slip on there, and it's going to be our control. The second slide is going to have a water solution that has a lot of salt in it. And then the third one is just going to have a drop or two of just regular water. Now let's go ahead and look under the microscope and see what our blood looks like in each of these slides. So this is our first slide here, and as you can see, there are a lot of red blood cells moving around, and they aren't swimming on their own. Um, you might have seen in my other videos, I, there's lots of bacteria and ciliates and things that I look at that do have the ability to swim, uh, but these guys don't have any tails or anything. Uh, they're just kind of floating throughout the uh, liquid, which is plasma. Now we're going to take a look at the second slide. Now again, this is the one that had a lot of salt in the water. As you can see, these blood cells look very different. They look very shriveled up. And this is what happens to cells when we don't have enough water in our system. Now conversely, I wanted to show what it would look like with just plain water, because everyone thinks that water is great, right? But there could be a time where too much water could be dangerous. The reason is, is that when I added the plain water, a lot of the blood cells actually popped. And so you can still see a few of them left, but they are very big and very swollen. So let's go ahead and talk about why this happens. So what just happened here in this experiment? Well, this all has something to do with osmosis. You see, in the cells and outside of the cells are different concentrations or amounts of uh, different things called solutes. Um, these solutes could be salts, they could be sugars, they could be different things like that. Water has the ability to move through these cells and into the surrounding area pretty quickly because cells have this thing called a semi-permeable membrane. Now salts and sugars and other things can also move in and out of the cells, but they require special pumps and special things as well. Now the thing about water is that it usually wants to go to places where there are higher concentrations of solutes which means that if there is more salt in the water instead of in the blood, the water that's already in the blood is going to leave the blood cells and go into the, the water. Now, if it was the opposite scenario and there was a lot of salts and, and other solutes inside of the blood cell, but then there was a bunch of water on the outside, the water on the outside wants to go to that area where there's a bunch of solutes, and so it'll fill the red blood cell to the point where it ruptures. So this is essentially why drinking salt water is extremely dangerous, because it pulls all of the water outside of your cells, and it dehydrates them and kills them. On the other hand, you could die by drinking too much water. Yeah, that's right. Um, it would have to be a lot of water, but it is possible. So. Uh, it's good to just drink a certain healthy amount of regular water. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this brief experiment, and if you haven't been to this channel before, I like to take my microscope on little adventures, and you might uh, enjoy this playlist called Small Adventure Saturday, uh, but I also like to do little experiments here and there as well. So go ahead and check them out, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks again for watching.